Welcome everybody to my demonstration painting night and today we're again looking at a um, uh, view from the, on the from, from off the Spanish mountains Guadalest monastery uh, kind of south of Spain location um, slightly different angle today and I'm also using uh, acrylics instead of oils from last time and I want to see how the acrylics will help me out uh, to work into more details at the same time, uh, create some nice dramatic depths uh, of the valley and the peaks of these cliffs. Uh, so I have my range of brushes here and I'm going to start with my round brush to sketch. And colors wise, I have some white, uh, ochre, uh, cadmium yellow, crimson, violet. I might just show you that's my colors, otherwise they look a little bit black. Uh, I have ultramarine and then fellow blue, um, green or emerald green, and I have some black so I can mix it with other colors. Right, so let's start with a quick sketch. Um, and I'm going to use a little bit of ochre, white, and violet. I love um, that combination of colors. A little bit neutral, but it does bring some color to um, this, the painting straight away as a, as a sketch. Right, so first of all, I need to think about uh, what's going to be my focal point. That's going to be probably the tower. Um, well, the two towers, the bell tower and the watchtower. And that lovely light uh, here in the middle from the cliffs and the, the buildings. Um, and then I'm also interested in bringing part of that uh, mountain kind of to, to show that volume of it. So if I were to plan rough shapes, um, I might go for something as a quick block um, of colors. Right, let me put my gloves on. So then I can pick up my sponge and use it as a, a rubber so I can move shapes. Uh, so that's possibly going to be a big shape there. So I'm looking at all of it together and something lighter, big block. Okay, so I don't want to separate it all to, uh, as a group, but a big chunk of it together. A little bit more darker tone for the paints again. Right, so um, there is some sort of height, a um, little bit of a flat line. If I'll go for all these little peaks, there are ups and downs, but overall it's quite a lot even line. Uh, I want to make it a little bit more dramatic, so it feels like uh, I could maybe change it and make it <clears throat> something a little bit more taller or shorter or something within that range. Okay, so I might need to bear that in mind. quite like that lovely big cliff of a shape. So I'm sketching not just with line, but I'm sketching with shapes uh, straight away here with dark and light, dark stain at the back, some of the light tones coming at the front. Right, then I've got this beautiful um, tree uh, at the bottom of the uh, monastery walls just outside. Uh, and the light will be coming through it, but overall I've got a big block of it. Um, I quite like some of these branches here as well. Actually, that makes me uh, want to shrink and make this all block tiny bit smaller, maybe stretched out. Because the whole tree could be almost uh, placed together in a big oval. So I'm planning my shapes and seeing them as a whole. Okay, 
There's another rooftop somewhere here. But a bit of a uh, silly perspective, almost like a third perspective as the building's camera on the on the, um, picks up on the, the lens picks up quite an interesting angle. I might play on that. It might be quite exciting. Uh, there are parts maybe of the castle walls there in the shadow, some sort of dynamics of the walls there. And uh, then my key angle of the valley here and some exciting mountain peaks finer distance. Okay. That's going to show the depths of it. I think maybe less uh, low, maybe not as low. Let's pick that one up there. And maybe I'll shrink this one a tiny bit. So quite nice. I love uh, using a sponge. So let's work into that. Okay, so it looks quite a nice, exciting castle shape. And then at the back, I'm going to have uh, some rocks uh, just coming out from the woodland on the slopes. They're quite nice, distinctive rocks. Again, showing. Uh, how the angle of the slopes of the mountain here. <clears throat> so that's going up and then that's going down. So I'm almost like following through um, the angles of, of the mountain. And this one's going over. So quite rough, quite sketchy, quite free. Right, um, so we've got that V-shaped valley and it's getting lower and lower and lower and somewhere, so within that valley um, direction, somewhere in the distance, we can see a bit of a, a lake, which featured in last week's session as well. But now it's got a different perspective on it, but slightly different angle. Quite excited to see how I can put it together. So kind of in a way, those very roughly, but those are my perspective lines within that landscape. And my monastery is going to be leading kind of all the way. So, okay, that's good. And then the, the house comes in here as well, the rooftop. Okay, there are some small buildings in the distance as well. A little bit of light uh, area here to, as well. And that should off, offset our uh, castle wall here. Great. Right, a uh, quick sketch is ready. And I'm ready to get going with my big tones. Right, now I'm going to use a larger brush. Uh, I want to work for some of the highlights on the side of the castle and the cliffs, maybe some of the uh, highlights. I wouldn't go for the lighter stone, um, but I want to get going, um, planning it, prepping it. So I'm going to use some white, some ochre, and some crimson. Maybe a little bit more. Okay. Uh, I will be making those areas lighter later on. Just want to have slightly prepared foundation for it. And also give me an opportunity to work out uh, those uh, heights of um, the distant ridges here. Okay, maybe this one's going to go much higher. And longer settling in there. Maybe this will stay covered under the trees. 
<clears throat> uh, would have very much liked to paint uh, on the spot. But unfortunately, it was a, a flying visit. So by the time we went around the place, I didn't have much time to to do much painting. Um, okay, so I've got my tower somewhere here, my bell tower. Well, roughly place it still here, but keep it as a as a unity together with a cliff and this edge is going to be stretching out and it tops off another castle wall or I think that was um, part of the wall here behind the tree and a little tower, viewing tower. Okay, some lighter rocks there behind as well. And there is a darker medium tones. They're still reasonably light and quite important. And they also offset uh, other elements here, but part of that cliff could have slightly darker tone, just using a bit of violet uh, with these warmer colors. Okay, maybe parts of these cliffs could have something darker there as well. Right. Um, a rooftop possibly as well. Although I will change its color. Just work, working more on the tones. And the rooftop. Immediately, the second I applied the, the shape, uh, I could feel it was getting a bit too too large, too too long. So I just shrunk it slightly. That's good. And some of the buildings at the back, I just paint them overall together as a block. There's a block as a group of them there. And some other um, highlights of, of the cliff, Got a nice shadow. Um, of the rock. So that will have loads of cool colors for me. And somewhere underneath here, there might be some highlights, maybe part of the wall, maybe part of the tree, something's going to be a bit more lighter here. Okay. <laughs> and while I'm on the foreground uh, with all these warm colors, I'm quite keen to go for my big block of my tree. And I think for that to keep a bit more free texture and not to overwork it, I'm going to use my sponge. So a little bit of white, some mocha, and a dab of uh, emerald green. Julia, I just had a question. Can you also use the sponge for if you're using oil paint? Yes, you can. It's a little bit different uh, because you will need much more oil or moisture on the sponge. Uh, okay. Because what I do with a sponge with acrylics, I dip it in the water, I rinse it and it stays moist. So with oils is the same, absolutely the same thing, but I tend to have smaller volume of oil in my pot. But for that reason, I'll just need to make sure that I have much more. But yeah, no problem at all. Nice and exciting. So let's have a tiny bit of violet with this. I want to have kind of uh, olive green. So it's not just pure fresh green. Uh, yes, so you can do this with oils. 
Okay, so that's a nice big chunk. Uh, and also, if you're working with a sponge, uh, it's easier to use um, larger surface. So you might need to pick up a larger border canvas, oils or acrylics. Both <laughs> will require slightly, it's easier to do on a larger surface. Okay, so I want to see that shape all together here. And maybe immediately offsetting it with similar colors somewhere at the back. So then I can work into um, much darker tones and also the highlights of the within those trees, tree branches. So. Right. <clears throat> now I can see some reference. So possibly loads of similar trees will be at the back, uh, but maybe a lighter version of that color, so more white, maybe more ochre, maybe less violet this time. Uh, as a block, to show that valley. And offset the shadows of the cliff where the castle walls are. Monastery, sorry. A uh, little bit harder doing details, or working around small edges with a sponge because I'm trying to squeeze it to the point. So we, I've got a little bit more control, but at the same time, I really like the, um, how quick you can apply the tones. Gonna gently change its uh, warmth to coolness. So dab of blue, dab of white, as we're going further away in the distance. So that's part of the uh, greens could be a little bit cooler. Uh, quite a lot of very dark tones. Uh, just want to try to block it. I love the darkness because I wanted to keep that darks, those darks at the foreground um, to support the depths. But we need to have a lot of medium tones here and lights. changing my green from a bit more cooler one to a bit more yellowy one. And we have a little bit more of a uh, darker shadow uh, as the form is changing, yeah, from a bit more flat to um, maybe there was, a, there is a stream or river, some sort of change within that landscape depths, <coughs> excuse me. And uh, there also will be some individual, some smaller changes within that, but nothing too major. So if I would have been working with a brush, um, uh, that would have been much more pronounced uh, those changes and with a sponge it's much more soft and quicker and also um, easier to add uh, colors and interact those colors with um, previous wet layers. Now some of these shadows I want to make quite 
cool with quite a lot of blue possibly even um, later on maybe turquoisey blues and uh, maybe some more depths of uh, ultramarine and violet maybe a dab of ochre to make it slightly greenish if there's enough blue there okay so i went for highlights greens and medium tones and again coming back to shadows and the shadows on the castle might be a little bit too uh, clumsy with the uh, shapes as I'm working with a sponge, but it's a good starting point. I'll make me simplify that. All that coming together. Mm -hmm. And something started to work in between, maybe um, the trees, tree branches, a bit of depth might not need to be as dark as that. <clears throat> just want to keep it as as it uh, together some of the shadows okay that a little bit reflecting for you here let's see if i can pick it up a little higher okay you can do that uh, let me just finish this corner and then i'll lift the board up so you can see a bit better Sometimes when it's different parts of the painting reflect differently. So some of these darker blues. And also some lighter blues. Some maybe fresh ultramarine with some white. Looks like part of the wall or some old uh, stone on the lower ground. Maybe even part of my uh, clock tower will have some of that color. A shadow on the house, lovely, bold, fresh. Again, I, I'm going quite um, strong uh, in pattern, but it will give me an idea of uh, if I'm on the right track, uh, if something needs to be changed or uh, amended quite quickly. Some of this lighter blue might need to be bolder lighter that movement happening okay I quite like that lake at the distance but that's going to have almost a whitish tone and then the sky uh, now as we come into the paler blue so i'm going to go for fellow blue bit more and this will be a light uh, color for the horizon and slightly darker uh, okay that's too dark that's better
Okay. So that light brings uh, quite a lot of space there. Okay. Right, let me wash my sponge and change the direction of. Right, once the big shapes are finished, let's go back to some of the smaller shapes. And I'm going to continue uh, with the mountains in the distance uh, using a little bit of oak and violet with a dab of crimson. Uh, it's quite a good color, but I need it very, very light. And I will build it up um, from darker to lighter, and then also we'll add some cooler tones uh, after I build up some warmth. Uh, so these are the areas I'm looking here. Maybe a little bit cooler. It does look slightly too warm. So dab of blue with quite a lot of white. Okay, so that was lovely, nice, flat, uh, exposed rocks. They're huge, but in the distance there, they're looking quite small. What's up now? Let me just check. Okay, tiny bit more blue, ultramarine blue. Ultramarine blue works better with warmer colors than the fellow uh, blue. Fellow blue works better if I were to mix it with some of the, uh, if I were to make some of the greens out of it. Um, maybe a dab of violet as well, have some um, kind of gray violet. Because some of these rocks becoming a little darker. Let's go back to them in a moment. Okay, that's maybe a little bit too light. Uh, there are some highlights and there are some darker shadows as well. Okay, so if I picked up the highlights here, maybe the shadows will, will have to follow. Okay, so it's going down. I uh, need to be careful not to get lost or get too excited about so many details at the back because my key focus should remain in the foreground. Uh, I think I need to have some lighter tones at the back. Uh, a bit more pastel-y in color before. I get nice sharp contrast. Okay, I can't see that mountain now. I need to go darker. Or oh, the sky might need to go lighter. Okay. So let's just put that as a shape for now. One side has more blue corner. Another side will have a little warmth. That's a corner, so I'll go for slightly violety, violet and ochre. Just want to get rid of all the background darkness there. And now if I'll go for paler uh, yellow blue, I'll just get rid of all the pinks from my brush. Some white, some hello blue. 
a much, much lighter tone. Nice, soft, white. Yeah, I think that light um, section of the sky dried much darker. It's a nice, pointy, uh, very much character mountain here. Stay a little bit higher. Nice white sky. Very tiny bit more darker ones. Down. Yeah, that's better. Uh, yeah, because uh, um, I was using my sponge. Uh, if I don't uh, pick up strong enough pigment, but there is enough moisture, um, the colors dry, showing the background. Um, and because my background is quite dark in tone, my violety and ochre, uh, that's became much, much darker than expected. Uh, to make my sky a little bit varied, I fancy adding some extra hint of light. And now I can see changes of light there at the back on the mountains themselves. Okay, a bit of light. Nice, strong, ultramarine, double violet. Just want to have a little bit of that bold color of blue for the back. Okay, let's it, let it settle there. A lot of, it's a small area, but with a lot of wet paint, so slightly harder to control. Okay, let it dry and I'm going to keep that darkness, but actually it's as much lighter there. And this edge becomes slightly darker. So then we have a contrast between the mountain far, far back, almost um, with an extra layer of, of white or light. Okay, and some of these rocks will be slightly darker now. Let's make more sense and then some of that will be crumbling and then these could stay slightly lighter that's good
Um, also keeps me planning my colors for the um, monastery. So less color at the back, a little bit more stronger color at the front. So if the colors are more diluted uh, in, in saturation, yeah, in that boldness of uh, hues and the front, we need to have a little bit of something much stronger, not just what light and dark, but that intensity of yellows, intensity of um, maybe oranges, greens, blues, uh, will be quite good. So we we'll need to make sure that there is a, a valley here as well. It does look like a, a valley. So there might be some more shadows. <clears throat> For small details, um, let's say shadows here, um, it's, I find it's easier to paint something dark and then come back with a light. Um, so my medium tones were there. Now I'm doing some of the shadows and then later I'll come back for um, a little bit more precise uh, highlights. Okay, so some of the greens might need lightening up there now. So at least that's giving me an idea of uh, how much light I'll need on my monastery. And I might do that uh, straight away as a little tester. So much more fresher pink and ochre. Now not maybe as bold. Okay, it didn't come out this strong in color, but mainly light. Uh, now in the photograph, uh, some of the areas um, of the cliffs appear very, almost like white. And some of the shadows appear very much like just black. Uh, as you know, I don't quite like painting exactly as photographs and cameras sometimes just can't um, deal with the volume of light in front of it. So it simplifies um, color um, as much as possible. So my uh, work here is to unravel that and bring the color back. Remember that. Uh, the warmth of the day, although it was winter when I went there, uh, it was good to see the, the sun and those uh, exciting uh, shapes under the influence of that sunshine. Almost off white, a little tower might keep it slightly smaller now. See if I can shrink a little by putting the greens over that area. Okay, one shape, another shape, a little bit too similar. A 
let's break it down with um, shadow, maybe separate it a slightly cooler color. Mm -hmm. Okay, better shape, uh, slightly on color for this stroke. Let's bring some more light into that and a bit of warmth. That's it. Settle again. By that I mean, paint when paint dries, um, you see better the effects of your strokes. And let's have some pale blue for the clock tower. So we can develop some key elements and then work around them. Okay, maybe a smaller brush for that even. So that's gonna be my highlight. Okay, tower might be a little bit shorter here. That's an overall part of my bell tower. A little bit stronger shadow. A little bit stronger border here. Just <coughs> trim uh, this silhouette so it doesn't jump too much. So if I, I go over there, it, um, sometimes it's easier just to trim it rather than repaint it. So I'm not worried of painting bigger shapes because I can create that shadow. Okay, so it's solid shadow for the moment, but I want to make it a little bit more exciting. And let's do a rooftop for it. The red and ochre. Okay, let's keep it slightly darker first. Okay, maybe more pink. So that I can work on top of it. And the lighter version of it will have much more yellow and white. A little bit similar to my existing color here, so it means that I need to change something around this rooftop.
especially if I were to add a lighter wall, almost white. I might go for white, direct white. Oh my right wall. Okay, some of the paint underneath is a little bit still wet, so So big block. So again, I'm painting the wall slightly wider than I need to, because I want to shrink it afterwards with the color of the rock. And also, so this rock is going to be quite light. And I want to play in that. Okay, but I can now do the roof at the back. Just let's make that part of the background being part of that rock rather than just a line. I start with a line and then I'll work around it. Some darker shadows back this area. It just find its shape. I quite like some of these wonderful blues nice and strong against um, an indigo uh, back, um, backdrop color. So just a little soft um, in color. I'll come back to that highlight, but it just tells us that not just a solid depth, which is going nowhere, it's part of the shadows. Mm -hmm. I might keep that brush and have another small brush. with a warm color. Cool brush and warm brush. Okay, this part of the wall could now be painted a little lower, find its place. And also have, so if I've done all the shapes quite big, now I'm fine tuning them. So the larger shape of the tower is now shrinking. Always the background um, greens with amendment of the shape within the shadow. It's mean that this green need to be supported at the back. Okay. 
down a bit more lighter. So then the tower stand out even more. That gives me an opportunity to think about them, the greens later on. Quite a tall tower. Okay, that's that's good. To make it even more striking in contrast, I'm going to add slightly darker blue edge that contrast. Um, the cliffs in between the monastery walls um, partially exposed to um, a lovely sand, sand um, stone rock, but also partially covered in vegetation. So you've got um, light on them, you have shadows on them, you have areas where you have uh, light vegetation, you've got areas we've got quite sharp, quite a lot of contrast um, tones of vegetation. Um, so I need to again to simplify it. Now that's going to be a tower, that's going to be part of a rock. So very small subtones. Okay, a little bit cleaner color. A little bit more warmth. It's quite strong yellow. So from the gray, uh, grayish rock color, I want to work more a little bit more into the warm, but maybe I just need a little bit more patience because it will keep a murky color till it dries and I can go over it. Okay, give it a, a try and then stop. Okay. So I've done too much gray, so now this is dry. That's it. Layers of color underneath makes it quite exciting. Now let's put uh, this part of the rock slightly under the tree.
So it's a bit too soft for the cliff edge. Uh, but I'm going to have to let it dry. Uh, So I need to have some sharpness to the straightness of these lines to show that some rock behind the tree at the same time. Don't want it's dominating there. Maybe that is that uh, wall at the base. Or somewhere, I think very possible because that makes sense. And some of this could just disappear further. No, maybe they just start to compete now. Keep one a little bit higher than the other. Right. Uh, let's have a look at the white here, not as bold and white, maybe a slightly different angle for the rocks. So the light is not falling on it directly. And here, maybe something in between, again, as it's drying. Okay, not dry yet. So if it's not dry, it gives me in between tones and then it stays um, too soft and blends really well. So that's not what I want. I have to be patient here. <clears throat> So let's continue working on dry surfaces. Okay. I quite love that um, dark shadow. Maybe I don't hurry up too much with this highlight. Some fresh white. Okay, and a little bit more for the tower. And to show that, change the form, change the perspective. A little plant growing behind it will just offset that direction. There's something else growing here. I actually find it a little bit easier today working in, in acrylics because there is a range of small details and uh, more sharper contrasts. Um, so with, when I was painting with oils last week, it was slightly 
complex to get that sharpness quickly. And effectively. So that's how we know which media sometimes tells us um, which will be better for certain images and others. Yeah, that's sharp lines like that was quite hard for me to make an oil last week. And this is quite good. We can also soften them. Keep certain things a little bit more obscure. Uh, shadows of the trees, parts of the wall. Okay, let's have a tiny bit of vegetation on these bare walls. So they don't look too pure clean. That's a nice olivey green, quite a light olive green. Mm -hmm. That's good. Usually something darker might be a, a larger plant. Holding on to the top. Okay, not too much details. Go on to different trees there. Okay. So now I've got a bit of um, character going on uh, at, the, at the center. I'm still waiting for some of these areas to dry. Um, but I can now progress further down, might be more into the tree, more into the buildings, um, give a bit more uh, sense of space at the back looks quite dark um they might want to make that valley slightly lighter so maybe and a bit bigger brush um i might just stop for a second for a photograph as well my right, slightly bigger brush oh i need some more white Fresh paper down. And let's have a look at um, the warmth of the house in the corner here. Now, if I look really close, um, the house has a white wall. But if I were to put it bold white, it might start competing to some of the rocks here some of the stones there. So um, I might have uh, a little bit more yellowy touch to it. 
and then put some of the shadows, maybe not as dark blue, but maybe some more uh, turquoisey blue. And that will give me an effect of the of the white uh, wall. So I'm painting, let's find a couple of windows there. And let's find just the gaps from the shadows uh, from this tree. Don't want the shadow of the tree to be an alien shape. Sometimes I can ignore the, the windows, the windows can come up um, separately on top. Just focus on the highlights and some possible shadows. Okay, same time I am following some of those windows subconsciously and a bit more lower to show that building is reasonably tall. Maybe a little angle to show that. Okay. And anything else of a similar light? I quite like that light somewhere, maybe here. Uh, a little bit more in the distance. I'll think of those shapes in the distance more abstract shapes than individual buildings, and it's a quarry, or it's a bit of both. Not a quarry, but kind of exposed. Bit more sandy uh, in color area. Uh, some other cliffs stand out. And again, we uh, will be better to see them as sub, um, not as important, not as uh, big. Volumes, but the supportive shapes. For example, Dorf set this edge of the castle, uh, of the of the wall, and the shadow. And I can also put a little bit of similar color on the edges. As part of the. Well, um, rock can be exposed to that similar light. Almost like little steps, so. Little platforms. That's why some of these could have some of that uh, light as well. Mm, that's exciting. Now, some of the tension between the two walls uh, is similar. So that's my, the, the shadow at the back would always appear slightly lighter. I'll go for a tiny bit more violet so it stays intensive in color, but in darkness it will be lighter. So I started from the building and I moved on with the same color elsewhere and now moving back into the shadows. But it does lead. To 
some of that variety. And I also can't use some of the darker, I'll use dab of black and blue to be back to indigo. And I can touch up. Few shadows, little um, happy dots, little um, not directional, rather than accidental shadows. It's much more rockier, much more sharper. That's better, that's exciting. Down a bit of green on those so they don't look too similar. Good. So I'm glad I was patient enough with this area for it to dry. Now it's much more clearer. Except I think my tower has shrunk a little too much. I think it's a little better, slightly wider. Just bringing the, the wall back. Um, also, it is a good opportunity to make this part of the bell tower slightly lighter, slightly different in color, slightly lighter. There is some wet color underneath. You might need to do another layer um, because it's the furthest uh, corner from that border segment, so it will be uh, the lightest from that contrast. Okay, I might do another layer on it as it dries. What you can do with a window on the other side now. Just a hint of it. Just a hint of an arch at the top. Okay, back to some of the shadows. Another indigo with a dab of violet in it to have extra contrasts. OK, 
his brush a little. All the splits I just swapped it. Okay, is it too strong? Possibly. Mm -hmm. A bit more greeny blue on this side for the valley. Tweaking. Okay. Um, my peaks ended up a little bit similar in size, so what I'm doing, I'm adding a tiny bit more texture to them, so then I don't need to change their shape, um, because they are similar. I'm having some more shadows here. Yeah, gives it more variety, and also don't want to have this edge too perfectly white. Although here I smudged it too much. Okay, let's bring it back to where it was. Right, let's leave them to dry. Let's come back to another tower. That's close. And, and this tower is drying, so let's top up that pale blue. That's glowing nicely as well. Dab of white for the window widths. Just where the light will be catching it, just on that corner. I know those are only tiny things, but it is our focal point, so contrast will be good, and then I can spend a bit more time on on the de on the uh, elements around around this wall. 
Let's go like that. <clears throat> Right, let's go back to my house. Forgotten about the house. So that's a similar pale blue. But it is easier to apply it with a smaller brush for the little dabs of the shadow from the tree. So I'm gonna mix it with a bigger brush. But apply it with a smaller one. For some of the shadow will remain nice and dark blue, and part of the shadow will start to be lighter. It comes out for some reason a bit patchy. And it's only another layer. And let's merge those two blues together. Let's bring some of the blue slightly lighter. And that's a type of blue we want to see in part of these. I'm not sure what they are. I think they're part of the wall. They're just lovely patterns of light, blues and uh, almost like little fluorescent shapes. Uh, maybe a bit of violet and white. Coming out from the darkness. Maybe slightly darker tone here as well to show that depth, even stronger violet and blue with a dab of black. And the shadow almost again, probably uh, surrounds here. Yeah, that's very exciting. All right, let's have a look at the little windows and the rooftop on the house and then the tree on the foreground and then maybe a few touches for the back. Right, so the roof is quite simple. We had similar colors before. A bit of ochre, a bit of yellow, a bit of white. Let's keep it nice and warm. Slightly darker. Red. And even maybe darker and violety coming close to this. Maybe I think it's um, slightly changes, got a bit of a bend within the roof. Uh, but even if I were to change the color, uh, Sometimes the old buildings have quirky angles to them. And over the time, it changes also gives a nice variety of color to it. And 
a chimney. And the edge of the roof will have a nice little white corner. Possible a dark, a little dark shadow. And now some of the darker windows shapes will give it a bit of a structure and then we can work out uh, the shadows, the final. Okay, let's go a bit to right. Um, and I might keep some of these windows a bit more obscure. Some will get darker, but some will keep a little bit obscure between those shadows. Um, that's a nice darkness. Um, there might be other trees, there might be other shadows, there might be other shapes of shadows. So we don't have to know the exact um, story behind those shapes here. I just simplify some of it if it's too busy. And if I use my lighter blue, I might simplify it even more. So it doesn't look like a derelict house, it looks like a looked after. Although some of the size of the windows could be different. That's better. And I can also tidy some of that uh, light on the walls. So small steps at a time, uh, little bits at a time. I think this shadow is a little too awkward. And if the layer is too transparent, it means that I need to wait for it to dry and come back to, to it later.
So it's an impression of the house, all the lights on it. Softening some of the stewards behind it so it's not too jumpy. Okay, what's happened with these two lines? Too similar. Okay, now I think I'm ready for doing some details on the tree here in the foreground. Let's uh, prepare my brush. Uh, maybe all three different size brushes. So I can load them um, and work into the details straight away. So I'll start with a larger one. It's not huge, but uh, probably the largest for the tree for me. A bit of white, a bit of uh, emerald green, a bit of ochre. Now, I already have got my most dark tones. So I need to start uh, with medium tones, a bit of violet, uh, and then build it up to lighter ones. So I we'll just test some of that. Some of these lighter tones will be very exciting. Also can go over part of the uh, house here. So I want to keep some of the shadows as well. Um, I do need to create the branches which are coming a bit more close to me. The light is catching them and the rest are disappearing in the lovely deep shadows. Um, now I need to vary the size of the strokes as the tree is getting low, I'm looking down at it here, a bit more um, directly at the top of the tree. I can also change the color of it, maybe tiny bit more into the crimson, tiny bit more into the warm orangey green, especially on this side. Um, Similar shadows for the moment and volume. So I just adjust that. So this, this side has more light overall, but it also means that I can build up more highlights here. Down a bit more white now. And let's change the size of the brush. I need more paint, otherwise it feels a bit dry to work with. I like of chunks of paint at this stage. Um, I'm gonna squint my eyes as I'm painting it uh, to see those lighter shapes better.
avoiding the bigger shadows and also in between tones I just done so maybe partially keeping them partially going over them I also want to keep a, a tiny brush on the go to see part of my existing wall. Um, there's some lovely um, branches on the tree as well. Let's see if I get a couple of light silhouettes. Um, I'm not so good with branches, especially tiny ones. I tend to imitate them one way or the other, but not to draw them with lines. So let's see what's gonna happen. Just little V shapes. Uh, but they um, create a nice pattern and also can paint in between some of these branches. Uh, get tiny bit more darknesses. That's pretty good. I can also do the same. A slightly darker tone, maybe a couple of branches which will have almost offset shadows next to them or different new branches, new tree trunks. continuations. So they're just not the same thickness. Okay, that's a nice reference to them without overworking. I can do a tiny bit more highlights on the tree now. Slightly more red, but uh, with a dab of white as well. So the lighter I go, the smaller strokes I'm uh, keeping. I'm also looking for the areas close to the branches. The third I'm going, I need to maybe change the direction of those strokes um, because the volume of the foliage changes and it couldn't be as, as wide.
done a bit more yellow. So changing that color is close together, but slightly varying. Okay, quite strong. Let's do it down a bit more neutral. If I were to overwork it, I'm, uh, I would come back with a medium tone, just so I can wash it off. And on the hand, some of my layers are still a bit wet underneath. Uh, so probably will be if I were to work too much. Uh, best will be to go over with slightly darker color and get back to the highlights again. Smaller brush is good. Just tweak some of the leaves so we see that less abrupt has big shapes, but Subdivided. Um, if I have a similar size groups of leaves, um, I can merge them by adding some smaller dots, gaps, kind of combining some of these shapes and then they don't appear too similar. I don't want to make too many separate shapes <coughs> as they will get all broken down. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> That's quite nice. That's coming together. And I want to have slightly different color tree close to that house with the shadow. And I want to leave it on its own. So maybe there's some tree trunks, looks like maybe some of the trees lost their leaves, but I think if I took print a tree in the shadow here of a different kind of tree. So that's my version, my addition. That's good. Yeah, quite like that one. Good, good, good. And now that tells me that I can use this color for part of the valley. And some of the edges of the trees. So tiny bit of details on the trees at the back. Because as they will be going further away, they will lose their variations. That shows the slopes. How steep some of them are.
of the light here. Still upset in my castle here. And part of the valley, so I'm now playing with a bit of extra light here. My lake might be redirected somewhere lower. That's good. <coughs> it's quite nice, dramatic uh, corner now without actually doing much, just put an extra light. Uh, that drama unraveled on its own. Right, a little bit abrupt shadow, a bit too man-made. Let's have a tiny bit of time on that. There's a final touches. Okay, even that already makes it look different. Now still a bit too, too perfect. Let's bring it back darker. It's quite like that quality of the uh, shadow. So that's what I want to do something here. But maybe look at the shapes of the um, shadows elsewhere, maybe even work into those treetops. It was precise. I don't want too much attention in there, actually. And the attention to stay here. I'm bringing it back. Okay. Direction there. I'll let it dry. And I think I'll just do some similar strokes. Um, for that cliff, and I think this shadow could come a bit more close here as well. That will support that length of the valley. And maybe a final stroke. I'll do a tiny bit of the lake here. And we'll stop for today. Just want to see some of the white 
in area, a bit of reflection of the sky. And to see it better, or oh, maybe there's a tiny bit of a dark edge part of the bank. To support it. Very exciting. I'm really happy with. The development here, something else could be coming here. Uh, nice and busy at the front. I think I could still do a little bit more details working maybe on the foreground here, uh, possibly bring some more fresher color for maybe top of the corner and maybe tiny bit of uh, highlight dots uh, on the tree. And I'm there much more happier with the mountain I've left a couple of areas dark. Again, it's something to look at uh, at the later stage. Uh, but that shadow is looking better now, especially if that is not its line there. That's quite nice setting off. So thank you so, so much for joining me today. Um, I hope you uh, enjoyed it. I had a little bit of um, something to get inspired. And I look forward to see you next year, next uh, week.